Hi, I'm Canary3D. This video is to show you the DAZ Studio program. It's a free program. You can get it at DAZ3D.com. Why is it free? DAZ3D sells content that you can load and render in this program. But you can also make your own content to load and render in this program, and they give you the most important content for free, which is a standard male and female figure with some basic clothing, skin texture, and hair. So this figure is the Genesis 8 female figure, and it's uh, a standard uh, sort of ideally proportioned, according to figure drawing proportions, figure um, that has all of its body parts broken out and rigged so that you can pose them. So um, if you are a uh, graphic artist who likes to paint in the computer, this is something that you can use to generate a reference image to paint over. the. Um, uh, apparently her clothes are not actually fitted on her right now. If I tell it to fit the clothes to her, then it will follow her. The figure is rigged with limits so that you don't, uh, for example, um, bend the leg further than a human leg will actually bend. You can turn those limits off if you want to and do hideous things. It comes with a set of pose presets. Anytime you create a pose, you can save it yourself as a preset, and then you can just apply it quickly with uh, a couple of clicks. There's a lot of different ways that you can control the posing of the figure. There's different mechanisms. I like to use these dials because I like precise control and I don't have precise motor skills myself. I'm going to go ahead and switch from the fast filament renderer, which is a PBR, physically based render built in. The render's very fast, but not with uh, a lot of beauty, um, at least not in its default settings. The iRay renderer is slower. It can render on your CPU, but it renders a lot faster if you have an NVIDIA card. Uh, my computer does have an NVIDIA card, but it's also about four years old, so it's not the fastest. But uh, this is a progressive renderer, which means you can watch it rendering. It'll take that grain out if I let it render for a long time. This is useful so you can see if your lighting looks right without having to wait for a final image. To render your final image, you can render it to a file if you prefer, or you can render it to this viewport. I'm just using the viewport render right now. So this is the free figure. Um, this figure can be modified in a lot of ways. The shape can be modified. The surface textures can be modified. So I'm just going to load up from my own collection here of things that I've purchased a couple of changes to this character. So um, first I'm going to switch back to the faster renderer. And I'm going to remove the hair. I'm going to keep her outfit on for the moment because this is a family friendly video and I'm going to just hop into my library. So I'm going to pull up an outfit by an artist called Eon Soul, who makes really cool sci-fi outfits, really cool fantasy outfits. And I'm just dropping this on her, and I'm going to go ahead and get these other items out of here. Eon Soul includes a bunch of fantastic material presets with their products. What do I mean by material preset? The material settings of the surface control the color. They control the shininess. You can see like on her hip here where it has a shine to it and looks like it's embroidered. That's all controlled by these settings in the shader channels. There's different maps loaded in here. There's different settings loaded in here. And there's guides that will teach you what each of these channels in this shader do. The base color here, this is just a flat map that you can make in Photoshop. You can make it in Substance Painter if you want to be able to paint it in 3D as you go. So if you can paint, you can take that basic outfit that came on this character for free, and you can go and make your own textures and apply them to that basic outfit. That's how this works. And then it's a combination of the texture and whatever base color you choose. So I'm going to go ahead and put her in um, a little bit of a different base color here. And that's going to turn this into an all red suit, a tomato red suit. But it's going to keep this texturing and this embroidery on her hip um, because it's an additive process. It's going to layer it all together. So now I'm going to go ahead and change her to be a little more interesting of a character. And for that, I'm going to go to, again, to a purchased product in my character library. This is by an artist named Josh Crockett, who does a lot of 
scary monsters, but also does some really pretty um, alien and elf girls. So now this looks kind of bizarre, right? Um, strange head shape, etc. But that's okay. She comes with a texture that's going to make her look more like what she's supposed to look like here as an alien girl. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this red texture on here. This is a painted texture by Josh that gives her this cool alien look. One of the nice things about the Genesis figure is you can mix and match shapes with this figure. So if I think, well, I think that this shape is a little too strong, I want her to be a little less uh, extremely alien looking, I can take this alien shape and I can turn it down to 50%. Um, I can change it to 70%, you know, um, and then I can also mix it with other shapes. Here's like a short fat dwarf chick. So now I can, you know, give her a big booty and uh, mix these shapes together to make something a little different. Now she's having a little trouble with the chest on her outfit here. It does this automatically. So if you have an outfit that you've made in Blender that you fit to the character, it's going to fit even when you change the shape of the character. It's a really nice feature. However, there can be some little glitches with it like this. It's calculating collision with the underlying figure and it's calculating smoothing. I'm going to give it a couple more smoothing iterations and that's going to fix the poke through problem. So for this I'm going to go ahead and create a second camera. Just going to take default settings on that camera and then I'm just going to flip to that camera so that I can zoom in on her face and I can make a change to the shape of her face. Now, right now her face is kind of blank and I want to give her more of an expression. So I'm going to this parameters to the pose controls. I'm going to start with eyes. I'm going to make them a little bit more closed and then I'm going to change the position of the eyes so that it's looking over at us at the camera. That's a little creepy. Um, you can look up and down. And then uh, we can, you know, she can frown, she can smile. So now we're going to give her a little bit of a smile. And we're going to um, change her eyebrow a little bit. So now she's got a little bit more of an evil smile. So that's a very basic expression pack. I don't even recall if that comes with with it for free or if it's, you know, like a $10 add-on. Um, it's definitely the first thing I would invest in if you're interested in doing final renders. If, if what you're doing is using it to uh, create reference material for drawing from, you really don't need to do that. You can probably just uh, figure out the expression based on the general position of the facial features in your reference. But, uh, it's, but it's kind of a nice thing to have. There's also uh, shaping changes you can make to the face. You can make all kinds of changes um, to, the, to the body. They all mix together. Here I'm going to just change the size of the nose just as an example. So we're going to give her a bigger nose. So um, those ears are pretty small too. Now the ears are super small because that's part of Josh's design. But you can modify those designs as you go. Here we're going to sort of add um, long elf ears. There we go. Uh, again, these are purchased. I'm not trying to sell you a bunch of stuff, but I'm just showing you some of the fun you can have with it. Um, you know, you you select the things that you're interested in in, uh, in working with and, and buy those. You don't have to buy every darn thing under the sun. I think I want to do a portrait render now rather than doing a full body render. So I'm going to switch over and we're back to the eye ray. Now she's got a plain gray background here. It's only rendering the center because that's what I've defined as my render area um, over here in the render setting. I like to use HDRI images to render with because I'm not very good at lighting and they contain the lighting info within them. So I'm loading up an HDRI image from an artist named Midnight Stories. These are space backdrops that are a 360 degree image that applies to the invisible dome in the scene. Now I'm skipping the rendering parts of this video. I'm clipping that out of there so you don't have to wait while I wait. It does not actually render this fast, certainly not on my system. Now I like this lighting. I like the direction of lighting, but if I didn't, I could spin the dome and get a completely different lighting effect. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
all right now it's like super washed out and so I just experiment with a few different directions for this so those are a few of the things that happen just by spinning this image and changing the lighting now the lesson I'm learning here is that Midnight Stories knows what they're doing and that the default position of this dome really is the best for this for a sort of a standard portrait render for this character so uh, so this is the one I'm gonna let render out next I'm going to show you how to import and render your own model that you've made in whatever modeling program you use so uh, right now my backdrop is just the generic uh, environment map. I'm going to change not to render the dome. I'm going to say sun and sky only. This is a very simple lighting method. If you understand how the sun works, you can light in this. Again, I'm not great at lighting, so I really like having this option, uh, particularly when I just want to show off something cool that I made. Um, I'm not necessarily going for uh, extremely complex lighting. Daz Studio can do extremely complex lighting, but I, Canary 3D, cannot because I'm just not that good at it. So I'm going to import um, a lighting sconce that I made. And you have some options here. I'm just taking it at the size that I already made it at. So I'm just going to move this up a little bit. This is a lighting object that belongs on a wall. Uh, I modeled this in Cinema 4D like I do most of my stuff. So now I need a wall, right? So you can create primitives in Daz Studio. So I'm just going to create a plane. So I should have created it in the right plane, but I'm not that clever. I just sort of take the default. So I'm going to rotate it into the right position. But uh, you can create it in the correct position. Um, I'm going to translate it up and then I'm going to translate it on the z-axis so that it intersects with my object a little bit so that it looks like it's genuinely mounted on the wall and doesn't you know have a gap um, and I'm just going to spin my camera to check say it's sunk into the wall a little bit which is how I want it uh, and now I'm going to scale my plane so that it takes up more space and looks like a real wall and then I'm just gonna go ahead and tilt my camera a little bit to get an angle on this thing. Now I want to change the surfaces. So to start with, I'm gonna put a wallpaper on this plane. And for that, I'm gonna browse to just a, a texture file. All right, so this here is um, a wallpaper from my parents' house that uh, when they redid their bathroom wallpaper, I grabbed a sample of it and scanned it. Um, before they put it on the wall. It's one of my favorites and uh, it's much too big in this pattern, right? Um, nobody would have that huge pattern on their wall. So I'm changing the vertical tiling and I'm changing the horizontal tiling to be identical and now I have a little bit more of what looks like a, a proper pattern. Now this is a perfectly smooth backdrop. I really should give it some texture like a bump uh, to make it look more three-dimensional, but because this is just a demonstration, I'm not going to on this occasion. But normally you would. You would have something that would give it that sort of tooth that you get from uh, a real wallpaper feel. Um, now here, my sconce, I have very lazily named my three material zones, mat one, mat two, and mat three. So I can't tell what's what. One of these should be glass, one is a light bulb, and one is the base. Fortunately, Daz Studio has this tool where I can just directly click on a material without knowing its name. So it's just a matter of changing your colors and adding flat textures, changing your um, uh, your reflectivity, your glossiness, top coat, metallic flakes, weight. All of these are things that you can read about in the um, Daz has a wiki that will explain this to you. So now I'm going to um, change the sconce. So I'm going to make it green. I'm going to give it a top coat that's blue, which I think will give it a little bit of a two color effect. Move its reflectivity up a little bit and then we'll see what happens because I'm just experimenting at this point, which is, for me, a lot of the fun of this application. So for the um, light bulb, I am going to use something that I created already, which is uh, a turned on bulb effect. 
And here you see um, within the shader here, emission is a possibility within Daz Studio. You can tell it that you want this surface to emit light and it will use it as part of your scene lighting, which to me is like the coolest thing ever. So now I'm going to switch to my NVIDIA iRay renderer and I'm going to see what happens. It's got a little bit of a blue flare down the edge of the the green, which is that top coat setting that I put in before. Um, so it's got a little bit of that that uh, um, kind of uh, two color glass effect, um, and you can see that uh, that blue flare along the edge here as well. Um, and then this light, which is much too bright, um, is being shed by this light bulb at this point. I am going to turn the lighting down quite a bit um, by changing the luminance here by a factor of 10. And now it's a, it's a gentler light. You can see the light bulb now. It's still pretty bright. Um, and then I've got the sun, right? I said I'm rendering using the sun. And so what I can do is I can change the time of day, I can change the latitude and longitude, or I can just rotate the dome. Um, and so I'm going to change my longitude here. And now it's nighttime, and so the only light is coming from uh, this light bulb again. Now having done this, I see what my error is with this glass shade, which is I have made it not translucent in any way. It completely blocks the light. And so I want to make it um, translucent. Let's see what happens if I do that. Now it's letting the light through, probably too much. We want to change the translucency color. And now when the light comes through, it's green. I'm going to put the sun back to a little bit more of where it belongs because I don't like that darkness. And so if I let that render out, then I have a nice image of my wall lighting sconce um, on a backdrop of my parents' wallpaper. And now I've skipped ahead so we don't have to watch it render. But you can see that's uh, how you get a glass effect, a translucent effect. All of this is built into the application and you can get it at daz3d.com and it's 100% free. Thanks for watching.